Good evening and welcome to this service of night prayer uh, with a reflection on the time of ascension and the remarkable time of challenge and change that the disciples went through and how we might learn some lessons with regards to how we might deal with times of challenge and change. As we go through, your, the words on the screen will be the words that I will read and the words in bold will be ones that you could join in with if you want to follow and be part of the service. I pray that this is a service where we can reflect, where we can offer the day to God and consider what might come next. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We pray together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Alleluia. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Let's listen to this hymn together. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colours of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature you in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name, you are amazing God, all powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. 
Sue from the Only Connect Connect group uh, is going to share our psalm with us. Psalm 121 verses 1 to 8. Psalm 121 verses 1 to 8. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Elizabeth is now going to share our reading, John 17, verses 6 to 19. The reading is from John, chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. 
I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and I know and know in truth that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your world is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia, Alleluia. This morning we heard the reading about the Ascension, the Ascension of Jesus in the first book of Acts. We heard of the disciples gathering around Jesus as he ascends into heaven. He tells them to wait in Jerusalem until the Spirit comes and then is taken out of their sight and into heaven. It would have been easy to read that again and to talk about the experiences of the disciples. A group coached and mentored in the ways of Jesus rather than in the ways of the world. A group dogged by challenge and change. A group gathered, tested, taught, retested, sent out, encouraged, tested again, chastised at times. A group that traumatically loses their teacher then miraculously regains him again and then loses him once more. Times of challenge and change seem to surround them as they do to us today. But I wanted to draw upon the things that were around them at that time that seemed to support them in their time of challenge. The reason why I asked Elizabeth to read from John's Gospel is that during times of trial, we focus just on the thing that is at hand, the here and now, the most immediate threat. Our vision often becomes singular and our minds focus on the problem and the problem only. I sometimes describe it like the big square block, the monolith, in the Stanley Kubrick film 2001 A Space Odyssey. A big black block that seems enormous. It looms in our vision and distorts everything that is around it. It sucks in light. It steals our joy. We're not at peace when we're around it. 
and it seems to be everywhere and everything in our thoughts and in our senses. Even if we try, we can't see over it, we can't see round it, we can't see a way through it. And if we back up, it seems to follow us just as quick. As the disciples saw Jesus taken and crucified, their focus must have been all the pain that they saw. As the disciples saw him taken into the clouds, their focus was just on the feeling of, what now? As something challenges us, I wonder how often are we confronted and our focus is just on that one thing that seems to traumatise us. The rest of life and time seems to fade in comparison and we're sucked into the pull of the thing that is at hand. The grief of loss, the trauma of sudden change, the hurt of crossed words, the pain of trust broken, the shock of a letter or a bill or an event that makes our blood run cold. And like the disciples, we're likely to see it and deal with it and try and solve it in complete isolation of all that we know to be true, all the things that we've experienced that tell us otherwise, and the wisdom that we gain through faith and fellowship. The words from John are comforting words. They are comforting. They're comforting not only for us, but also for Jesus. This passage comes from the time in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before Jesus is arrested. He knows it's coming. He knows it's the journey that is ahead. He sees the pain. But his words remind himself, and therefore us, of several key things. One, that he had a job to do and he did it. He had words to tell, knowledge to give, and an inheritance to share. These words were the promise of eternal love and forgiveness from God. The knowledge was that we are utterly loved, and the inheritance is that we're called children of God through the faith that we have and his own sacrifice. Hmm. Two, his words remind us that Jesus prayed for us and for our protection, and that his joy, that satisfaction and peace that comes from God and calls us to rest, that that joy is for us to abide in. It surely reminds us then of Paul's words to the Romans that say, if God is for us, then who can stand against that? That there is nothing, not life or death or angels or demons or the plans of the world or the fears or the worries that we can put before us that can separate us from the love of God. And three, he reminds himself and therefore us that we are part of God by the promises of God that we hear and the will that we have in order to walk with him through this world, we are part of his very being. Amazing stuff. But we continue to forget them when we get to challenging times or sudden change comes upon us. What do we need to remember? What are these truths? We are loved beyond measure. We are prayed for and the promise of eternal life is protected by God. We are never separated from God's love. And by that love we are part of his very being. I wonder what would have happened to the disciples if those lasting words were written into their hearts when they saw Jesus taken away. Their whole world battered and bruised. What difference would it have made in that time between him ascending and the Holy Spirit coming? Remember being loved beyond measure, being prayed for and the promise of eternal life, being protected by God, and being told that they are never separated from God's love 
and that by that love they are part of his very being. And the disciples, like us, had other things going on for them. They had each other. The fellowship of believers around them, upholding them, walking alongside them, encouraging each other, reminding each other of those sacred truths. We are loved beyond measure. We are prayed for. And the promise of eternal life is protected by God. We are never separated from God's love and by that love we are part of his very being. So as we walk through times of challenge, remember these truths. Write them on your fridge, pin them on your dashboard of your car, write them into your diary, stick them on the back of the front door so that they're the last thing you see before you go out. Remember also the fellowship of people around you that can help you focus on something other than that big black stone that is in front of you. Remember to turn to Christ, seek safety with the Father and pray for God's Spirit to give you strength. And although none of us like big sudden change, remember that we have a whole crowd of witnesses in heaven echoing Jesus' prayer of protection over us. Remember that we have much to give thanks for and remember those times gone by when we felt held, prayed for, protected and helped. And like Jesus did in that garden and the disciples did in the rooms in Jerusalem, we need to remind ourselves that God is in our homes and in our workplaces and in our very hearts. Look to scripture for encouragement. Look to your friends and your fellowship for prayer. And look to God for your strength and stamina. We have an in awesome God who reigns with wisdom, power and love. He loves us utterly. He promises eternal life to us and protects us. We are never separated from his love. And we are deep within the very heart of him. We are his children. Amen. Please join in with the words in bold type. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. We now pause for our prayers of intercession. When I say the words, let us pray to the Lord, you might want to reply, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace that comes from God alone, for the unity of all peoples and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Church of Christ, for Christopher, our Bishop, for those who minister in our parish and for the whole people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the nations of the world, for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of London, for our Greenwich, for our neighbourhoods, 
for our community on the peninsula, for our neighbours and our friends, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, for those in our fellowship whom we know, and for all who are in need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray for the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the dying, for those who mourn, for the faithful whom we entrust to the Lord in hope, as we look forward to the day when we share the fullness of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. For those going through times of challenge and change. When the world is ahead of them and they need to be reminded of the truths of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to God. For yours is the majesty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. We conclude our prayers with the Lord's Prayer and the Collect. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May the risen Lord Jesus bless us. May he watch over us and renew us as he renews the whole of creation. May our hearts and lives echo his love. Amen. I hope you found this service of night prayer helpful. Uh, I hope you found it a time to reflect and consider the day that has gone and the week that is to come. Remember the words of Paul in the first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, where he says, Rejoice in all things, give thanks, pray without ceasing. And may we do that as we seek to deal with change and challenge that lies ahead. And if we've been through times of change and challenge and we've seen God uh, alongside us and his spirit within us, then please share that with those around you, that you might strengthen their faith in the days and weeks to come. Amen.